Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to have a look at Open Mandriva. This is going to be my first time looking at the distribution. I've installed it, poked around with it a little bit today, have not done a whole lot more than that. We are looking at the latest release candidate. Their website is at openmandriva.org. And uh, I found that just having a brief look at it, there's a lot of really cool functions and features to it that uh, definitely make it worthy of examination. You can download it over here. So uh, this is 4.2 is the download. And I think that, um, uh, I think that uh, the one we're looking at is the 4.3 release candidate. It's whatever the latest release candidate is that uh, we're gonna be looking at. So 4.3 release candidate. That's the one we are actually looking at today. And so there's a lot of information available on the website. You can kind of see what they're doing. Uh, they are an independent distribution. Their package manager, um, you update things with DNF. So uh, for those that like Fedora and OpenSUSE will already be used to how you can manage packages on it. But there are a lot of other functions and features to it that really makes it a good distribution. So booting into the virtual machine here, the default compositor is going to be X, but you can choose Wayland. Uh, in my original tests, this is a rare one in that I found it seemed to work better on Wayland than X uh, in the context of my virtual machine. So here you can, uh, the default is Plasma X, there's a failsafe X, and there's a Plasma Wayland. And um, if you really like, uh, if you really like, um, your uh, multiple desktop environments and things like that, um, then um, really it's going to have, it's going to disappoint you in that it only has plasma. So now on the desktop, what I found the best about this, it has this welcome screen that, I mean, I haven't seen a welcome screen this helpful since, since Linux Mint. And this one's a really good one. It gives you all of the information on it. So we have here, uh, it says here using LX4.5, codename nickel with kernel 5.12.4. So it is very new Linux kernel. And if you go through each of these sections, it is going to tell you about all of the different elements. So here's the kernel. It tells you what's new about the kernel. Here's the Plasma version, 521.5, gives you information about that. And then just some of the main packages, LibreOffice is 7132, the newest available final stable release. There's a fresh and there's a stable, so they're using the stable here. We have a control center that is absolutely second to none with the things you can do. We're not talking about just setting your desktop wallpapers and stuff. We're actually talking about what is the default boot options. We're talking about um, the uh, what repos are you using? Are you on a stable or a rolling or whatever else? There are so many things in this. We also have a feeling like section. So, um, you know, it, it is now thus catering to this modern whatever I feel is right mindset. If you feel like Plasma Breeze, if you feel like Ubuntu, if you feel like Windows 10 or Windows 7, if you feel like Mac OS, you have the options to go ahead and um, play around with your settings and do that with the click of a button, which is really nice. Here's the fresh packages. Some fresh packages included are Krita, uh, Camsoto, SM Player, VLC, K Backup. So what you'll notice is the entire suite of applications are your K applications. It has those and maybe a few other common applications, but it doesn't have things like GIMP in it just because not a K application. So you have a lot of those those different options. And then automated billing, uh, build farm. So here's some features that you have. Now this is really where Open Mandriva is going to stand out. First is we have a repo picker. This is good in that you can choose if your system is a rolling system or something else. So here's your update channel. You have release, rock, rolling, and cooker. So each one of these guys here, this is the current working versions. 
Um, if you go ahead and switch, we're going to hit no on this. I'm not going to switch stuff in the middle. If you go ahead and switch, your rock is going to be your stable. Your release is the latest release. And I'm guessing that the cooker is going to be like a development branch. So you have a lot of these. You can enable unsupported packages. They're free, but not officially supported. So some of these guys, if you need some, some applications that may not be in the official repositories, we have uh, restricted packages that are free, but encumbered by patents that may make them illegal in some countries. So it's your responsible. And then they have non-free. So this is a really good way of handling all these types of things that some distributions have a difficult time working with to figure out which ones you can have and not have. So you have that option right here within the welcome manager. Desktop presets, this is your feels like. So if you wanna be like, I, I just gotta trick people into thinking I'm running Windows 10, go ahead and uh, click the button there. It's gonna change everything. We're not gonna log out now. Any issues or problems we'll just deal with. We'll just understand that there may be some things that don't look just like Windows 10. You can see here, it gave us the, the layout, the icons, everything just like Windows 10. Here's the Windows 10 menu. So if I go ahead and right click and uh, pin to menu, you can see that we have the options here to uh, create things and uh, move them around and stuff like that. So you can create a whole Windows 10 look and feel onto your system just with a click of a button. We can also go into a Mac OS version. We have a Windows 7, we have an Ubuntu, and then we have the default plasmas as well. So here is your um, here is your uh, Mac. If I'm not mistaken, doesn't Mac have these buttons over on the other side or I'm, I'm mistaken? I might be mistaken. I don't use Mac enough to remember. So here you go. You have uh, your nice Mac look and feel to it. It's putting everything kind of up where Mac happens to be at. We're going to go ahead and go back to the default Open Mandriva look and feel just so that you can kind of see uh, what we're doing there. So that's a cool option. And then update configuration. Do you want your system to automatically download and install updates? Do you want to download updates automatically but install manually? That's the default. Or do you want to be like, don't do anything automatically. Let me figure it all out. So there is definitely in here something for everybody. And then we have the control center. This is going to be very much like Yast. We'll leave that down there on the bottom. We're going to walk through this. Then we'll go ahead and have a look at what the control center is going to look like. So that is your features. Here is your configure. You can configure your network. Now, one of the things I was not able to do is I was not actually able to get um, SMB shares working. I, I, I didn't play around with it a lot. It was boot up a file manager. Does it work? No. All right. Well, I guess I'll have to fight with that a little bit. But we have uh, different options for the networking and, and things like that. Under applications, this is a very nice place here where you can just install some of the most commonly used applications. So here's uh, GIMP, Scribus, Pixelize, LibreCAD, Inkscape, Blender. Here's internet resources. The default web browser, by the way, is, uh, I believe it is Conqueror, I think. No, Fallon, uh, F Falcon, excuse me, Falcon web browser. So that's your default web browser. Yeah, it works just fine, but you can do Firefox, you can do Chromium, and that's the only one that's right here. We do have Dropbox there as well. Multimedia, you can install your codecs, and then there's a variety of other things that you can install from there. Here's some development tools, utilities. So these are just quickly installing applications. You, of course, still have Discover as an option, so you can do that, and I'm not sure if this has... Um, uh, is it called Dream? Yeah, DNF, uh, DNF uh, Dragora. It has that. I, I think that's a crappy program, but hey, at least it has it if you like it. So there we are. Here's how to contribute, and here is some help about it. So we have the applications is to get your most common software with Discover and uh, um, Dragora as being your, your primary means that you might install software. So over here, this is the control center. Here's software, install additional applications with DNF Dragora, Open Media, uh, Mandriva Repo Picker. We've already looked at that. K Backup is a good way to run your backups. As far as your hardware is concerned, you have your touchpad, Bluetooth, monitors, keyboards, things like that. We also have local disk configuration in addition to drive configurations. 
system. We have our system boot. So if you need to make changes to what is going on in your system boot, you can do this. This is very handy if you're dual booting and you want to very easily go back and forth between different things. What is the first thing to boot? So if you had Windows on here and you wanted that to go first, you could set it to default boot into Windows or default boot into any other Linux distribution that you have. So you have a lot of different options inside of there. Here's guest accounts, bug reporting tools. A couple places you'll see the bug reporting tools. So that's actually good. Here's desktop themes, desktop icons, and fonts. And then under our uh, let's see, <clears throat> here's our security, firewall, passwords and keys. So there we have it. I think the control center they said is still kind of in beta. So there is kind of what we get out of the box. As far as the applications, mostly it's heavy on K applications without a whole lot of other applications out of the box. So you can see it is a full complete operating system without an excessive amount of bloat. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of most of the K applications, but you do have some things. Oh, look at that, a sound editor. I wonder how well that is compared to Audacity. Is your K mail, K address book, your full LibreOffice suite. Here's your basic settings. So overall, you can see that this does have a lot of functions and features. It's a full operating system out of the box. The biggest downsides are it only has one desktop. You may be able to install more with the repositories. I didn't go ahead and check that, but uh, that is definitely um, something you can do on most distributions. This one, out of the box, you only have Plasma. That's great news if you love Plasma, and it's not great news if you like anything but Plasma. So as far as our overall options, what do I think about this distribution? Well. Overall, I really like what I'm seeing. It has that good blend of resources for the person who is a new user and a person who is, um, who is a uh, uh, you know an advanced user. You can configure a lot of things in the GUI. Overall, it's going to work very nicely. You can see we've played around with everything here. It's still running in under a gig of RAM. It's not overwhelmed. It does feel a little slow and buggy for me, but most distributions do in my virtual box at this point in time because I really need to push some updates, get some newer versions of things on here, and that's going to be done very shortly. But overall, what I'm seeing in here is a very nice, uh, very nice um, Linux distribution. It has all of those tools that you will need for uh, managing your system without having to go into a terminal. But in the event you do need to go into a terminal, we have a couple terminals there installed. There's that one. I'm not, I think I looked at the other one before. There's a couple of them there, I guess. So uh, over here, as I said, uh, that is using DNF. So if I do sudo DNF upgrade, enter our password, then um, this is kind of what, what you're doing. There's nothing there because I upgraded it earlier. But if you do need a package installed and you don't want to go into the, the GUI tools, you can just use DNF. So there we have it. We have a, a very nice distribution. Out of the box, the thing works really well. You have the option between Wayland and X, with X being the default. You have a rich suite of the latest rolling K applications, a very new kernel. You can choose a stable release or a rolling version of it without doing any multiple uh, downloads and installs. You can simply change it on the fly, update the repositories, run the upgrade, and then you will switch between a rolling and a stable release. It has all of the tools, all of the functions to make your desktop look exactly like what you need your desktop to look like. And really, there you have it. Overall, this to me looks like an excellent distribution. Maybe it might be one I play with a little bit more uh, going forward, although I do kind of like my Arch and my Linux Mint. But anyway, that's my uh, first look at, at uh, OpenMandriva. Let me know your thoughts of this distribution in the comments down below. What was your favorite part about this? Is there anything in this as kind of a deal breaker for you? Let us know that in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software 
that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.